Greetings to you. Welcome to physics class. We are still on the topic electromagnetic field. I once told us that this topic is very, very bulky, but I have tried in my little way to try to, to reduce the workload of this topic. So sit back and relax. Let's look at what we have for today. In today's class, we shall be looking at Faraday's laws and also Lenz's law and of electromagnetic induction and then the motor generator effect. We shall be looking at inductance, eddy current, power transmission. Other power transmission, we shall be looking at also the, trans, uh, the transformer. In today's class, by the end, of this class, you should be able to state Faraday's law and Lenz's law of electromagnetic induction. Number two, define a transformer. Distinguish between step-up and step-down transformers. Deduce the mathematical equations of transformer. Distinguish between an ideal and a practical transformer. Discuss energy loss in practical transformers and how to reduce the energy loss. And so let's look at laws of electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction is the basic principle of operation of transformers. I hope you should take note of this. Electromagnetic induction is the basic principle for the what? Operation of transformers, motors and also generators. Electromagnetic induction was first discovered by, by, by first discovered way back in 19, 19, in 1830s by Michael Faraday. Faraday noticed that when he moved a permanent magnet in and out of a coil or a single loop of a wire, it induced an electromotive force or EMF, in other words, a voltage and therefore a current was produced. So what, what Michael Faraday discovered was a way of producing an electrical current in a circuit by using only the force of a magnetic field and not batteries. This then lead to a very important law linking electricity with magnetism. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So how does this work? How does Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction works? I once told us here that when we are talking about electro magnetism. It is a joint interaction between electric field and magnetic field. I will be exposing you to a whole lot of new things you haven't thought about. How to produce electric current using coil and a magnet will be achieved in this class. So just sit back and continue watching. So uh, what are we talking about? So we are asking, how does this work? So when the magnet, uh, which will be, which we will show down below here in the next slide, when the magnet, this is what we are talking about. When this magnet, this is what we mean by electromagnetic induction. When Faraday brought this bar magnet close to this look, to this coil, this look like a solenoid to this coil, this we move. This galvanometer arrow will move this way. And when the, the bar magnet is moved backward, the, the reading, the arrow will turn back this way. And that spawned him into the law we are discussing today. So let's go back to this discussion. When the magnet, as shown, I just showed it right now, is moved toward the coil, the pointer or needle of the galvanometer, which is basically a very sensitive uh, center zeroed moving coil ammeter 
will deflect away from its center position in one direction only when the magnet stops moving and is held stationary. With regards to the coil, the needle of the galvanometer returns back to zero as there is no physical movement of the magnetic field. Likewise, when the magnet is moved away from the coil in the other direction, the needle of the galvanometer deflects in the opposite direction with regards to the first indicating a change in polarity. Then by moving the magnet back and forth toward the coil, the needle of the galvanometer will deflect left or right, positive or negative, relative to the directional motion of the bar magnet. The grammar you see me reading there is simply explained here. What that physics is saying is, this is a bar magnet. If you bring it close to this uh, sonar, this coil, this will move this way. If you bring it backward, it will move this way. If you, if you put it one place without moving it backward or forward, I mean forward or backward, this needle will stay at the zero point here. It will stay here with no deflection. Do you get that very well? So we have explained that. So let's look at Faraday's Faraday law of electromagnetic induction. Quickly take a look at this. We have explained all that I won't want to go back to this again. In case you intend to copy this in your notes, take note of this slide. Let's, let's move on. From the above description, we can say that a relationship exists between an electrical voltage and a changing magnetic field, to which Michael Faraday famous law of electromagnetic induction states that a voltage is induced in a core, in a circuit, whenever relative motion exists between a conductor and a magnet, magnetic field, and that, and that the mag magnitude of this voltage is directly proportional to the rate of change of the flux. This is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. If they ask you, this is what you will say. In summary, this is the law. In other words, electromagnetic induction is the process of using magnetic field to produce voltage and in a closed circuit and also a current. So how much voltage EMF can be induced into the core using just magnetism? Well, this is determined by the following three different factors. One, just like a little just like what I explained in electromagnets that if you want to increase the magnetic field of an electromagnet you have to increase the number of tons of the coil or you will have to increase the voltage a similar case is what we want to look at here increase the number of tons of a wire in the coil by increasing the amount of the individual conductors cutting through the magnetic field, the amount of induced EMF produced will be the sum of all the individual loop of the coil. So if there are 20 tons in the coil, there will be 20 times more induced EMF than in one piece of wire. We are just revolving around the same mountain. So please, get this straight. Increasing the speed of the relative motion between the coil and the magnet. If, if the same coil of wire pass, pass through the same magnetic field, but its speed or velocity is increased, the wire will cut the, the lines of flux, that is magnetic uh, flux density, at a faster rate 
so more induced EMF will be produced. Increasing the strength of the magnetic field, if the same coil of wire is moved at the same speed through a stronger magnetic field, there will be more EMF produced because there are more lines of force to cut. So if we were able to move the magnet in the diagram as, as, explained, as explained here, and then that is what we are discussing. Increasing the number of coils here will increase the current. So if uh, we're able to move the magnets in the diagram as shown above, in and out of the coil at the constant speed, and distance without stopping, we will generate a continuous induced voltage that would alternate between one positive polarity and negative polarity, producing an alternating or AC output voltage. And this is the basic principle of how electric generator works. And this is the basic principle how we should we underline this on how the electric generators works. In small generators such as a bicycle dynamo, a small permanent magnet is rotated by the action of bicycle way inside the fixed coil. Alternatively, an electromagnet powered by a fixed DC voltage can be made to rotate inside the fixed coil such as in large power generator producing, I mean producing in both cases and alternating currents. So this is a simple generator. This is a simple generator. If we bring this close to this place, this is the rotor. It rotates this way. What they are saying is if you continue bringing it back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth constantly, you will constantly produce an EMF here that will go this way. This is sinusoidal wave form. So we are still revolving the same uh, mountain. Take a look at this quickly so that we move on quickly. So Faraday's law has an expression as EMF, which is the, the voltage, is equals to um, minus B. This beta, beta stands for magnetic flux density, where the L stands for the length of the coil and the V, the, the velocity, measuring the use of volts. What we are saying here is if the conductor does not move at right angle, that is 90 degrees to the magnetic field, then the angle will be added to the above and then you will have this. Note that sin 90 is 1. And so if it moves at 90 degrees, sin 90 is 1. So 1 multiplied by this, you have all this. But if it does not move at 90 degrees, then you will have this. So uh, quickly, this negative sign gives birth to uh, Lenz's law. This negative sign that you see here gives birth to Lenz's law. So let's quickly look at Lenz's law. Lenz's law of electromagnetic induction. Faraday's law tells us that inducing a voltage into a conductor can be done by either passing it through a magnetic field or by moving the magnetic field past the conductor and that's if this conductor is part of a closed circuit. An electric current will flow. This voltage is called induced EMF. As it has been induced into the conductor by a changing magnetic field due to electromagnetic induction with the negative sign in Faraday. I explained that with the negative sign in Faraday's law telling us that the direction of the induced what, current or polarity 
of what they induce EMF. I explained the meaning of that negative sign. That, that negative sign tells us about uh, Lenz's law. So let's look at that. So, but a changing magnetic flux produces a varying current through the coil, which itself will produce its own magnetic field, as we saw in the electromagnet tutorial. I taught you some some basic of electromagnets and I asked you to go back and get some materials and try to form an I shape and a U a U shape electromagnet. So, we have discussed Lenz's law, and so let's look at the next slide. Please, kindly take this. I don't need to explain all these things. I just copy this thing here to make those I intend to copy this note, copy it down. So, take it down, take it down, take it down. This is the next, the next slide. Go through it, go through it, go through it. Want to look at AD current. What do we mean by eddy current? Eddy current generated. Okay, let's go to this slide. One final comment about Lenz's law generating electromagnet induced induction. We now know that when a relative motion exists between a conductor and a magnetic field, an EMF is induced within the conductor. Both the conductor and but the conductor may not actually be part of the coil's electrical circuit, but may be the coil's iron core or some other metallic part of the system. For example, a transformer. They induce EMF within this metallic part of the system causes a circulating current. Causes what? Circulating current. To flow around it and this type of of core current is known as what ad current that ad current is that circulatory what current so ad current generated by electromagnetic induction circulate around the coil core or any connecting metallic components inside the magnetic field because for the magnetic flux they are acting like a single loop of wire any current do not contribute anything toward the usefulness of the system. Take note. Eddy current is no good in the circuit. Eddy current, underline this as you read, toward the usefulness of the system, but instead they oppose the flow of the induced EMF acting in the negative force generating sensitive heating power loss within the coil. Just like just like friction just like friction that is what a current does or resistance. So resistance in solid electricity and then you have a current in electromagnetism. Simple. So let's Look at this quickly. So this, look, this is the circulating current we are talking about. You see this? It is moving in the opposite direction of the flux. The flux is moving. It, the, the eddy current is moving this way. You see that? And then the flux is moving this way. So it is opposing the flow of the current and also generating unwanted heat. So the change of magnetic flux in the core, in the iron core of a transformer above will induce an EMF not only in the primary 
and the secondly winding but also in the iron core the iron core is a good conductor so the current induced in the solid iron core will be large furthermore the eddy current flow in the direction which by lenz's law acts to weaken the flux created by the primary core consequently the currents in the primary core required to produce a given b this b stands for magnetic flux b magnetic flux field is increased so the hysteresis curves are further along the h as that is the horizontal axis this is what we are talking about so to reduce uh, eddy current you have to laminate the iron core so this is with no lamination this is the eddy current you move this way but when you laminate it you now cut this to move into small small loops and hence reducing their effect on the system so that diagram just go through this thing quickly go through this thing quickly let's move on let's move on induce emf let's move on let's move on we want to look at transformers from the beginning of this class i told you you will be asked to define a transformer and also distinguish between a step up and a step down transformer you also be asked to explain uh, what you mean by an ID or a practical transformer and also you have to discuss energy losses and also how to reduce energy, energy, energy losses in a transformer so a transformer is not a new thing to you and me this is a transformer we want to look at the physics behind the working of a transformer today these are pictures of a transformer primary coil secondary coil primary current i mean secondary current secondary voltage primary current primary voltage number of turns in the primary coil number of turns in the secondary core this is r the resistance take note let's move on so a changing magnetic field will also produce an induced voltage in the core this is how a transformer works all transformers also work with the principle of electromagnetic induction when alternating current is passed through the primary core the magnetic field around it is continuously changing as the size of the current increases the field grows as the size of the current decreases the field collapses a secondary coil placed near a primary coil will in this changing magnetic field will be in this changing magnetic field thus as the magnetic feed cuts through the secondary coil a voltage is induced in it an alternating voltage is produced in the secondary core so the core is the frame of which the coil are mounted the core is the core is usually made of laminated soft iron the word soft does not mean that the iron is easily bent. It means that it it means that it means that when sorry when magnetized it loses its magnetism as soon as magnetism is turned off. This is the principle of working of electromagnet which I explained in the other class. So this is what we are talking about. This is the AD current, and when you laminate it, you cut this into, uh, you, you, you stop it moving this way, and the current starts flowing 
and then it is reduced. So we want to look at the step up transformer. The step up transformer. Step up and step down transformer. A transformer is an electrical device that changes the voltage of an AC supply. A transformer changes a higher voltage supply into a low voltage supply and also vice versa. What we are saying here is a transformer is capable of stepping up voltage and also stepping it down for the suitable use of our appliances in our household. So, a step-up transformer. A step-up transformer. A step-up transformer. A transformer that increases the voltage is called a step-up transformer. Step-up transformers have more turns on the secondary coil than they on the primary coil. This is the secondary coil. These are the number of turns, number of windings of the coil. You can see there are more here. This is the secondary side and this is what the primary side. So for all step-up transformer, the secondary coil has more number of turns than this. This is the voltage on the primary coil, the voltage on the secondary coil. The current on the primary coil 2.5 ampere and then the current on the, the current on the primary side. Telling you in a step up transformer the current is more on the primary side and less on the secondary side. Step down transformer. A transformer that decreases the voltage is called a step down transformer. Step down transformers have fewer turns on the secondary coil than they on the primary coil. Look at it quickly before we move on. So, in summary, when an alternating EMF or AC voltage, that is, EP stands for voltage in the primary coil, is applied at the terminal of the primary coil, P, an alternating magnetic flux is produced in the ion core which links or threads the secondary coil S. An alternating EMF that is in the secondary coil ES of the same frequency as that of EP is induced in the secondary coil by mutual inductance. What do you mean by mutual inductance? Mutual inductance is the flow of induced current of voltage in a coil due to an alternating or varying current in a neighboring coil. Note that the same flux or line of flux, line of force link each turn of the primary and the secondary coils. Hence the total flux linking the two coils is proportional to their number of turns NP in the primary coil and also the secondary coil. The induced EMF in the secondary coil, ES, depends on the EMF in the primary coil and on the ratio of the number of turns. If I were you, I will underline this. I will not take this for granted. I will underline this. So, mathematically, what we are discussing is this. Secondary core EMF divided by primary core EMF is equal to number of tons in the secondary core over number of tons in the primary core. This is given as this ES over EP is equal to NS over NP. Dot dot dot. Please note that this above equation A is a very very important transformer law. What to discuss an ID transformer, just like I, an ID machine or a particle machine. You know that an ID machine is that machine that has the efficiency of 100%. And in an ID machine, we were meant to know that you don't have friction. I don't know if that's possible. 
but it's possible. So we also have ID transformers. So what is an ID transformer? In an ID transformer, you have the efficiency of what? 100%. So the power developed in the secondary coil is equal to the power developed in the primary coil. This follows from the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy is also applied in this topic. So hence, from P is equal to I, V equals to E, I, E, we write I, S times E, S equals to I, P times E, P, that's equation B, where I, S and I, P are the secondary and primary currents. Hence, we write again, we have E, S equals to this. So, bringing, equ bringing equation, uh, equation what? Bringing equation A, sorry. Bringing equation A and equation C together, we have this expression here. So from, so from equation D, we also write Ns over Np squared to Ip over Is. Please write all these things down in your notebook because we're making use of these things very, very important. So we can see from the above equations that the currents are inversely proportional to the number of turns in the coil but the voltage are directly proportional to the number of turns in the coil. Note the following. I would like you to, to note this. Note this thing down. This is a summary of everything we have discussed in the transformer. I don't need to read it out. I just have, I wanted to go through it quickly. Let's move on. What discuss energy losses in practical transformer? We have two types of transformer, ID and practical. In ID transformer, the efficient, I mean in the practical transformer, the efficiency is never 100%. And so we want to look at the reasons behind this. Why is it that the energy, the efficiency in uh, practical transformer is not 100%. One, there are energy losses. Energy losses through AD currents. Go through this. So, such losses can, this is a way out, sorry. Such losses can be what? Can be reduced by laminating. We discussed that earlier. So, go through this in quickly. Number two, hysteresis. This is a waste of energy due to reversing the magnetization of core. The core is made to go through a cycle of magnetization during each alternating cycle of the primary current. This is a way out. Hysteresis loss can be reduced by what using special alloys hysteresis loss can be reduced by using what so on the line this, this is the way out you are asked this in your exam this is what you say so the the i square r or heat loss factor so because the primary coil have resistance, some energy is lost in the form of heat energy. So the heat loss can be reduced by using thick. This is the way out here. This is the way out. Please note this point so that when you are asked, you won't be confused. So leakage of magnetic flux. Some energy is lost due to leakage of magnetic flux or flux density. This arises because not all the, the lines of induction due to the current in the primary coil pass entirely through the ion core to the secondary coil. This loss is reduced. The way out is here. This loss is reduced by special forms of coil winding or by efficient core design. 
It is because of the above that the efficiency of a practical machine is never 100 percent. So, the efficiency of a transformer is given by output power over input power times 100 percent equation F. And then efficiency is power in the primary coil over power in the secondary coil times 100 percent. So, application of transformers. Transformers are used in our appliances at home. They are used in power transmission. There are many applications of transformer usage. Go to this in quickly. Uh, to this, we have come to the end of this class. I hope you had a nice section. I want you to pause this video intermittently, watch it with pen and paper in your hand. When else we meet, we shall be looking at a brand new topic. Uh, no, before we go to the bio topic, we shall be calculating a lot of problems using transformer equation. That will be our next video. Thank you and remain blessed. God bless you.